Hi everybody, my name is Tyler Foster and welcome to this video about hypertension. Now what do I mean when I say hypertension? It's just simply a fancy word that means an increased blood pressure above normal range. Now there are two main measurements that we need to look at to diagnose hypertension. We need to take a look at the systolic level and then also take a look at the diastolic level. So let's make up a blood pressure. Let's say I have a patient that comes in with a blood pressure of 138 over 78. The higher number, the first number reported, is going to be your systolic blood pressure. And that represents the heart contracting. So we're going to take a look at a pressure within a blood vessel when the heart is contracting. That's going to be our systolic reading. Then also, we need to take a look at our second number, the lower number, and that's going to represent our heart at rest. When we take a look at the heart at rest, the pressure within the blood vessel is going to be lower than when the heart is contracting, and that is going to be our diastolic reading. Now, the million dollar question is why do we care? Hypertension affects multiple organ systems. It can lead to vascular diseases. Now, vascular diseases is kind of like an umbrella term. It's going to include many different diseases, uh, such as stroke. It can affect peripheral vascular disease, uh, aneurysms, aneurysms. It can also lead to atherosclerosis. Um, and it can also uh, lead to other diseases. So vascular diseases is just one of the systems that it can affect. Hypertension can also affect the heart, for example. It can lead to myocardial infarctions or heart attacks. It can lead to left ventricular hypertrophy. Now what in the heck do I mean when I say left ventricular hypertrophy? To explain this, I like to think of a gym. Let's say a bodybuilder goes in and works on their left bicep every day with increasing weights every day. Now their bicep is going to get large. Same thing kind of holds true with the heart. If the heart has to contract against an increased blood pressure or increased resistance, it's going to get bigger. It's going to have hypertrophy. So the muscle is going to hypertrophy and that muscle is going to be your left ventricle. So um, if, if you have more resistance, you're going to get a bigger muscle and then that can cause further problems. Now hypertension can also affect uh, the kidneys in multiple ways. It can also affect the eyes. Um, many different many different systems included. So here we see the vasculature, we see the heart, the kidneys, the eyes, many more that I'm not going to list. Now, the symptoms. How do we see the symptoms present for hypertension? For the most part, the takeaway message here is most people with hypertension are asymptomatic. Now, they're asymptomatic because of this. Blood pressure fluctuates second to second. Every minute to minute, every hour to hour, and every day to day, the blood pressure readings are never going to be the same. It's going to be a dynamic reading. Now, many different factors kind of account for this. Like breathing can affect the, the blood pressure, your mood, medications, hormone regulation within the body, your hydration status can even. So many different factors. Now, when the blood pressure fluctuates every second, personally, I don't care. My body can regulate it well enough on its own. I don't need to be alerted or have symptoms that my blood pressure is fluctuating uh, on a second to second basis. Now, in the long term, let's say my blood pressure is 120 today. Two years from now, my blood pressure could increase to 160. Now, even though my blood pressure increased, every so often, the body may reset our baseline blood pressure. So it thinks normal is now at 130. And then it may reset to 140. And then it may reset to 150 and then eventually lead to 160. Now, people with hypertension are typically going to be asymptomatic. However, you can see some instances of end organ damage. Now, like I said, it's a multi-system disease. So signs of stroke, signs of aneurysm, signs of heart attacks, that could all make you think, huh, do they have an underlying case of hypertension? So some signs and symptoms of end organ damage or vessel damage could present with headaches. A patient comes in with recurrent headaches or a new onset of severe headaches. Um, vision changes. 
the eye is very delicate and the blood vessels within the eye are going to be sensitive to blood pressure changes. So when you have an increased blood pressure, you may get hypertensive retinopathy. You may get papilledema. Uh, you get many eye changes. So blurry vision, for example, could be a symptom of, uh, of hypertension. Now, the kidneys are also going to be affected, like I said. So you may see proteinuria or protein spillage in the urine. You may also get chest pain, uh, shortness of breath. So notice how everything here is kind of all-inclusive. Multiple organ systems are going to be involved. Most people with hypertension are asymptomatic. However, if you have long-standing hypertension, so long-standing high blood pressure that is undiagnosed, um, you may start seeing symptoms related to all these uh, affected organs. Now, how do we diagnose high blood pressure? We need to first take a look at normal range. A normal range for a 0 to 59 year old is going to be anything below 140 over 90. So a systolic pressure of 140, a diastolic pressure of 90. Anything below this is considered normal. If you're above age 60, we revise those guidelines to anything below 150 over 90. Older people have a little bit more leeway. However, if let's say an 80 year old comes in with a comorbid condition, if they come in with a comorbid condition such as diabetes or chronic kidney disease, we're going to revise them and stick them in the 140 over 90 category. So they need to be managed below 140 over 90. Anything below this is normal. Anything below this is normal, um, except for our little kicker here, which is the comorbid conditions. Now, to diagnose hypertension, it's a systolic blood pressure above 140 or a diastolic over 90, um, and then same true with this. Now, we can also take a look at uh, the frequency. Now, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story here you're gonna walk into an outpatient clinic to see your doctor. Now that doctor is gonna be coming at you with this whopping, large, 16 gauge needle pointed straight at you. Ah, your blood pressure is going to skyrocket. Now, I said blood pressure fluctuates on a second to second basis. So we need to have at least three different readings of an elevated blood pressure to actually diagnose hypertension. So let's say you go into your office, they come at you with a large bore needle. You're at 180 over uh, 100, for example. Not enough to diagnose hypertension. You do have high blood pressure, but you don't have hypertension. Now, let's say you go in two weeks later. We need at least two weeks separating the readings. You go in two weeks later, you're at 160 over 110. Still a little elevated, so we need to come back yet again. We need to have that initial visit plus two repeat visits with elevated blood pressure to diagnose hypertension. So after that third reading, we can officially label you as a hypertensive patient. Now there are some factors that play into taking a proper blood pressure. You need to listen for the crop cough sounds and that's gonna measure your range of blood pressure. The patient needs to be sitting in a nice quiet room for at least five minutes with their heart uh, arms supported at the heart level. They don't need to have any caffeine in their system and they don't need stimulants such as smoking, drugs, medications for at least 30 minutes or an hour prior to the reading. Also some other things to think about that can play into the blood pressure reading. Uh, the cuff size uh, is important. The bladder or the part that inflates of the cuff needs to at least encircle 80% of your arm. Uh, there's a difference between a machine reading and a manual reading. Manual readings can be more sensitive, but they are subject to user error, such as like letting out the air of the cuff too fast, um, incorrect placement of the cuff on the arm. So you need to repeat any abnormal readings that you get. All right, and then lastly, we get to prevention. For the most part, blood pressure can be managed by a proper diet and exercise regimen. Now, for a proper diet, I'm talking you need to limit sodium or salt ingestion, and then also balanced fruit and veggie diet. Now, 30 minutes of exercise 
aerobic exercise specifically is recommended at least four to five days of the week. So most days of the week um, to, to keep blood pressure in check.